Jack. Now, I should point out, if you're on um, an Avio, for example, you do not have the front inputs. You would simply have the rear inputs available. But on this Renome, again, I have front and rear inputs. And you can see that as hi it has identified my, my camera today that's coming in on the FireWire input. Very, very important to point out, you should never hot swap your FireWire cables with a camera or a DV deck. What that means is you should never have your power turned on on your camera and your Casablanca and connect the FireWire cable with the power on both units. It is possible for a slight surge of, of electricity, a slight surge of voltage to come down the cable and damage the video board in your Casablanca and or in your camera. This is not a Casablanca issue. This is industry-wide. You should always have one of the two units powered off when you connect your FireWire cable. For me, I choose to have my camera turned off. I connect the FireWire cable. When both are connected, I simply turn the uh, power on the camera back on. Now, with my camera connected, I could go ahead and push the playback button um, on, on the camera, and it would begin to play back, and it would confirm for me. I would then see the footage in the screen behind letting me know, okay, Chet does have footage going on here, and the camera is all connected. But I'm going to go ahead and press stop on the camera because there's actually a more elegant and efficient way to do that. So I'm going to click the main button to go back to the main menu. And so we've addressed the first three menus at least you know, in, in the smallest detail to get us working on this first project. Then I'm going to go ahead and begin recording footage. Now, what, what I have the capability, I said a more elegant interface to start the camera. If you are working with a DV camera, mini DV camera, connect, camera connected via FireWire, you also have what manufacturers call transport control. It has nothing to do with Star Trek and the transporter room. But what this specifically is, this lets me control the mechanics of the camera. I can push the playback button and it will actually begin to play the camera. I can push pause, I can fast forward, I can rewind, and, and so on. So it's, it makes it very convenient and very handy for you. The other button to take note of here is this button here. By clicking on this icon, it turns on and off what we call your peak LED monitor. This lets you monitor or check the volume of the audio, the sound coming in off your camera. And you can actually ride gain on it, which means you can adjust the volume. You can raise it or you can lower it. Now, I highly recommend you do this with some level of care because if you're, if you're raising and lowering extreme, it's, it's, it's going to sound less than good in your final presentation. If you know your audio is a little bit hot, a little bit too high, or if you know your audio is a little bit too soft and you run it through and preview it here, it is possible to make some slight adjustments here and make it a lot easier for you in your production. But today I'm going to go ahead and set this at 0 dB which is it's going to bring in the sound volume, the same volume it was recorded at. Down here, take note as well, remaining 20.8 hours. So I still have roughly 21 hours of footage space left on my hard drive. It's very important to take note of this as you continue your project work. If you find, go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and, and stop this footage now. And, and, and again, paying attention to this remaining uh, reminder here, this is an estimate. This is not a, a, a totally precise because we're not sure how much uh, audio you're going to have on there, how many effects and titles, which all take up a tiny bit of the hard drive as well. It's a good idea to leave yourself some wiggle room. I generally don't go uh, fill up my hard drive more than about 80 or 85 percent and leave that r remaining space on my hard drive for the effects and titles for my audio work and what have you. And again, if you find yourself running up, up at or near capacity regularly, I highly recommend that you export some of your uh, finished projects off. Uh, and we're going to show you how to do that in the addendum when we talk about the new archive features and or it's time to purchase some additional hard drives from your Casablanca dealer for all that great work you're doing. Two other um, icons and buttons over here in the interface that you're going to see regularly throughout the tutorial today. This is what I call the minimizer button. And this simply shrinks, shrinks down the whole menu so that you can see what's going on with your footage. The other button right next to it allows us to move the menu up and down. First, let's close that audio monitor button. 
and then because sometimes you've got footage with some important subject information at the top or the bottom and this lets you still see your menu interface uh, but move it to the top or the bottom. Now I've already taken the liberty of, of recording some footage in, in this uh, particular hard drive so I'm going to go back to the main menu now that we've gone through and set up our project and we've actually recorded some footage in, we go into the edit window. Now it's this edit window where you're going to spend probably the majority of your time. Now here we have 4 minutes, 33 seconds, and 0 frames of information. Okay? If you're relatively new to video, this last uh, series of two digits again represents frames. And in our system of video and television we use in North America, there are 30 frames in one second. So once you hit uh, 30 frames, it rolls over and that gives you another second. Now, it will automatically label this S2 Scene 2. That was the second scene that I had recorded prior to putting all this other good stuff in here, which you'll see later today. I want to name this clip, so I'm going to call this um, C because this is footage from the aquarium. Uh, thanks, by the way, to Don Simmons, uh, a longtime Casablanca enthusiast and professional videographer uh, from uh, Metro Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, this footage today comes to us from the Georgia Aquarium. Now, I've named that scene, but as I click on this trim button and scroll through here, you can see there's a lot of different shots in here. Well, I'm going to take advantage of this great button in the Casablanca interface called Auto Split. So I have this first scene down here. And by the way, this is what we call the scene bin down below. And you see it's got its name. Think of this almost like two menus in one. Down here on the bottom portion of the screen, we have our scene bin. And that's where we keep what professional videographers call your raw footage, the footage that you're going to make your masterpiece out of. And where you're going to create your masterpiece is up here on the top part of the edit window. This is called the storyboard. Think of this uh, in, in painter terminology. This down here is your palette of colors. And this, the storyboard, is your canvas. That's where we're going to put the scenes we want the audience to see in the order we want the audience to see them. But first we're going to work a little bit down here in the scene bin before we get to the storyboard. So I've got this four and a half minutes worth of footage and I want to split it up into all the separate pieces that will make this long clip. So I click split and as long as you've loaded your footage in via Firewire, the DV cable, and as long as it was shot on, a, on some sort of DV camera, mini DV, DV cam, even the HDV cameras, I click auto and it's going to look through that footage and try to find what's called the index mark. Now the index mark is something that the camera automatically puts on the videotape essentially saying here's the end of one scene and here's the beginning of the next scene. Now uh, longtime users of Casablanca will appreciate this button. I can not only add these to the scene bin which we've always had, I can add them to the storyboard right now if I want to. But I just want these newly split clips to go down in the scene bin. So I left click on the OK button and it tells me, Chet, this four and a half minutes worth of footage is comprised of 19 separate scenes. So I click OK and take a look at that. Isn't that nice? So quick and easy, it automatically splits out all the separate footage. Now it's nice to note as well that the original shot is still retained. It gives me copies of all the separate scenes. Now you will note also that I, I named that original scene before I went to auto split and I highly recommend that. It just makes it very easy for you to manage all the footage you're working with. See there's C number one and then C.2 and C.3 and so forth and so on. So it just it, it gives you an easy way to manage all your footage and all your separate clips. So here we have a shot, for example, that's 20 seconds and seven frames long. To view that clip, we, we simply click on the playback button. You'll say, well, Chet, which playback button? I'm going to click on the playback button that's in the lower part of the screen because I'm working in the scene bin. If you, your eyes immediately be drawn to this playback button on the top, that will play back the storyboard again. These buttons affect the storyboard, which we're not working on yet. So we're going to stay down here in the scene bin and work on all the clips down here. I can click on this I button for information and it tells me that this footage was originally recorded on uh, March 15, 2007 
it was 